Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to begin service. Let's all stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this morning. Father, have your way this morning. Move in a special way. We thank you for your abiding presence. We thank you for moving in our midst. We thank you for accomplishing your will in our hearts by faith. I thank you for everybody that's here this morning. We just worship you. Let's give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah.
for a reality in Jesus Christ. For the love of the Almighty in the There's a lot going on as far as God blessing and God moving. I know it's the 4th of July and people are, uh, people seem to be preoccupied with celebrating. Preoccupied with, and there's nothing wrong with people having a good time. Sometimes some people, they said there's more travel th uh, this 4th of July than most 4th of Julys. And, the, and a lot of that has to do with the pandemic. Uh, a lot of, uh, we're free to go and do here and there now as we were not in uh, last year. So I understand that there's a lot of people, uh, they're doing this and doing that and all of those things. And so we're not um, dismissing that and we're not finding fault with anyone uh, for taking the opportunity to go out of town, have a good time, enjoy themselves and all of these things. But at the end of the day, as a pastor, I still have a responsibility to God to the church, to the city, amen. And I, uh, I was sharing last night in Bible study that our neighbors were standing outside talking when my wife and I came out to go to the car. <laughs> and they said, you guys, what, what was that he said? He, I, he said, do you guys ever take a break? Because all they see us doing is coming and going, coming and going. We're either going to a Bible study, going soul winning, doing running around, going to see people, go visit people, on and on and on, going to church, and all of these things, amen. And I told him, I said, yeah, it's on Fridays. Sometimes we, we take a break or whatever, but there's always something to do. I told him, I, told, I, I hollered across the street, I said, it just keeps me out of trouble. I said, I don't have time to get in trouble. Amen. If I'm busy, if we're, you know, when you're busy, it'll help keep you out of trouble. Amen. It'll keep your mind from wandering. Amen. But did the Bible say he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed on thee. Amen. I mean, if every, I mean, as soon as I get off work, usually I get off about 2.30, 3 o'clock, I got to study. We got to go see this one. We got to visit. We got to do this. We got a home Bible study. There's no time to get into nothing. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, I'm sitting, and by the time I get home, my wife would tell you, by the time I get home, my head hit the pillow, and she's trying to talk to me, and she was laughing at me the other day. Believe it or not, she said I was snoring like a freight train. And she said she looked at me like, really? <laughs> You know, because usually I'm teasing her, like when she comes in the room, I'll play like I'm snoring or something. But this time, I was for real. <laughs> because usually by the time I get home, I'm, I'm beat. And, um, but, but I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. And um, uh, my overseer reached out to, to me and to others. And... He shared something with me that I thought would be a blessing here in uh, Pittsburgh. So I'd like to challenge you and uh, others that are not here. Um, I'd like to challenge you to, to, to step it up to another level. But I want to warn you, I want to warn you that to do that, there's a price to pay. And so I'm not trying to trick you into nothing. I'm not trying to manipulate you into anything. I'm not trying to paint a picture to, as if, uh, let's do this, and there's no uh, work and sacrifice that's going to have to be involved in it. But it basically centers around the story of a man that had graduated from a certain Bible school, not our Bible school that we went to, but I think, which I thank God for. But this man had gone to this Bible school, and uh, they went to the... Uh, people there to ask of him 
Uh, he was in line for whatever. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to do something with him. And um, they said, uh, was he a good student? Yes, he was a great student. Good student. Amen. It's a blessing if you're in school or if you go to school to be a good student. And man, that, that's, that's a good thing. So we, we don't want to dismiss education. Education is a good thing. But anyway, um, so, oh, did, uh, did he go to class? Uh, did he read his Bible? Did he pray? Did, you know, did, did they do all the things that was required of him? You know, it's a blessing that if you're involved in something to do all the things that you're required to do uh, so that you can reach your potential. But then there was one last question that they asked him. Did he change lives? Did he change lives? And that's the question that you have to ask yourself. It's one thing to be a good church member. It's one thing to read your Bible. It's one thing to pray. It's one thing to um, do the thing, you know, pay your tithe. And you have people that don't even do that right, right? And, uh, and I'm not, believe me, I, I'm thankful for the support. I'm thankful for God's goodness. I'm thankful for people that give to the program of God. So we're not criticizing you, amen? But if you're going to do something, you should do it right, amen? Whatever it may be, you don't want a person that's a mechanic half doing your car, do you? You do? You just take your car to a backyard mechanic and say, hey, just straight, just piece it together. Huh? No. I want my car fixed. I want it done right. Amen? Or if you, whatever it is that you're having done or whatever it is you're doing, you want it done right. When you go to your doctor, do you want your doctor to half, half step? No, I don't think so. <laughs> like, doc, whatever's going on there, you let me know. And, and if we need to get something done, let's do that, right? Why do we treat God any differently? When it comes to the scriptures, when we pray for salvation, we should, we should do it right. When we pray for the Holy Ghost, we should do it right. Whatever we're doing for God, if, if there's no one else you want to do things right for, it should be for God. Amen? Amen. And so the Bible says to give a tithes and offerings, right? Then we should do it right. What is tithe? What is offering is just whatever free will amount that you would like to give. But tithing is a whole nother thing. Tithing is 10% of your increase, right? Whatever, you know, for instance, if you make $200 a week, your tithing would be $20 a week. You know, you understand what I'm saying? You have, you have to be very careful because God, uh, you want the blessings of God in your life. You got to do right. Amen. We can't just shimmy shot and, and, and just do any old kind of way and then we want God to pour out the blessings on us, don't we? Right? Amen. So I'm just trying to tell you that whatever we're doing, let's do it right for God. So they asked the question, is he a life changer? When he's out or when he's laboring for God, does he change lives? And that's a question we have to ask ourselves. And I have to ask myself that question. And so um, I have these things here, it's like a card, and I'm just going to leave that there for you to pick up after church, and I challenge you to become a life changer. <laughs> you say, well, how are we going to do that? Well, if you want to be the kind of person, I already have mine, I'm going to leave these here, I'm going to stick it right there, you know, just come by, pick them up at your um, uh, leisure, and in order to be a life changer, your life need to be changed, don't it? Don't, wouldn't you think so? So what this is about is, as you are endeavoring to help others, or as, as you are endeavoring to change lives, your life is being changed at the same time, right? So we have here what is called a 3530. 3530, right? You want to join the 3530 club? Life-changing club, there's a little line under that, uh, on the front of it. You know, you stick it in your purse or your wallet so you can keep up with it. There's a calendar on the back of the little card. 
there's a calendar here on the back, and each day you check it off. Now, it's already the fourth, right? So if you want to try to catch up because the first didn't start on Sunday, you're welcome to do that. If you want to start today with that, just go ahead and do that. We're not here to put any undue pressure upon you, but maybe you should put pressure on yourself, right? Amen, because I promise you the devil's putting pressure on you, right? <laughs> uh, we all get pressure every day to do this, do that, sneak this, sneak that, be underhanded, do this, do that, do the other. That's pressure, right? That's pressure. So anyway, each day as you change your life, you do three, five, and what? 30, all right? What are, what, well, what is it, Pastor? Well, the, uh, when you, you know, what you do is you read what? Three chapters of, of the Bible a day. That ain't a lot. That is not a lot. When you get up, however you choose to do it, maybe in the morning read some, and then maybe in the evening read some. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to try to do it all at one time. And, uh, and I promise you, if you make this commitment, you will, you will change and you will help change life. So the fifth, so the third, so you wake up three, five, and 30. You read three chapters a day, however you choose to split, you know, Monday, noon, and night. Maybe you read a chapter in the morning, maybe, however you want to do it, you know what I mean? And then five is invite five new people every day. Hmm? That ain't that hard to do either, if you really think about it. If you just put the effort into it, you know how many people we communicate with every day? Uh, most people, if you're out and about, and just, to, you know, take, I, I made sure that I set some pamphlets out there. I set Bible study pamphlets out. I set re regular pamphlets out. And I set some brand new, we have brand new regular church cards. They're all sitting out there. Just grab them at, so grab up a life changer. Then grab up whatever you need to do what God wants you to do. And then the last one, which is going to be, which when you really think about it, it's really not that much of a challenge either. Spend time in prayer 30 minutes a day. And you can break that up. In the morning, pray 15 minutes. And in the evening, pray 15. What's 15 minutes? Really, what's 30 minutes out of a 24-hour day uh, to give to God? If you really want to be spiritual, Tithe your day to God. Uh, tithe your day to God. What's, what's, tw what's tithe on 24 hours? Yeah, 240. It'll be what, two hours and 40 minutes, I think. And so what I'm saying is I'm challenging you. You say, well, Pastor, I've never done anything like that. That's the point. That's the point. This is how you become changed, and then this is how you become alive. You know how many lives you can change by you being what God wants you to be, and then you're, you're not only working on yourself, but you're, in, you're impacting other people's lives all at the same time, becoming a what? Life changer. Amen? I challenge you. I challenge you to step up this morning. I challenge you to be what God wants you to be. I challenge you this morning to step up with myself, my wife, Reverend Steele. I think Sister April, she's up with the kids. She's already uh, 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 got going with that. And anyone else that would like to get on board with this. Amen. For so long, people, that, well, what can I do, Pastor? I, uh, I want to do this and I want to do that. This is something you can do. This is, a, this is a way for you to impact yourself and impact the church at the same time. And just imagine if you did this, you say, okay, I'm not going to only do this in July. But this is something I can do regularly. And begin to just say every month from now on, I'm going to do my very best. And if for whatever reason a day or so things don't work out for you to be able to do it, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. I mean, this is not about being micromanaged, right? This is about you getting better. This is about you and God, a personal thing between you and God for yourself, for your church, and for your community and your what? Fellow man. 
Amen. And I promise you, if you do this, God will bless your life. God will bless your life. Amen. I promise you, God will bless your life. So anyway, I thought I would um, just throw that out there. I put those right there. The uh, materials are in the back. Amen. Step up. Step up to the plate. And then uh, a lot of the others, when we have the opportunity, we'll present it to them. Uh, I believe unless something changes on we have a service tonight at 6, and then we have a, a home group 2 up in um, Pleasant Ridge on Tuesday night. Amen. And so we're looking forward to having Bible study in the library. Amen. In a bigger room. Amen. So God is blessing. And that Pleasant Ridge is kind of a big place, so we're going to go out there and go soul winning. And we're going to invite people. And if we can't get them to come down to the church, maybe we can get them to go to the Bible study. Amen. And uh, we'll set it up and put it all together. We're busy. Amen. Plus, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> I have to work on my regular job tomorrow. So, But don't feel sorry for me. Amen. Don't feel sorry for me. Amen. Uh, I, we just, hey, this, we've been doing this for years. Amen. And, and uh, don't, don't cry for me. Amen. It's about being busy. It's about doing what God wants us to do. Amen. And being all that we can be. So anyway, that's a lot of stuff. Amen. But I challenge you to become a life changer. Amen. To become a life changer. Um, I'd like to share a message with you found in uh, Psalm 33. Psalm 33 and um, verse 12, just one verse. And uh, once again, or oh, I don't even know if I said it once yet, but um, happy 4th of July. It's so weird having 4th of July on a Sunday. It just feels weird. Amen. And, uh, but happy 4th of July. Amen. I thank God for our country. I thank God for you. I thank God for this city. I thank God for everything that he's doing. Um, like I said, good things are happening here. And, uh, and we're going to stay positive. We're going we, we to stay uplifting. We're going to keep on believing God. We're going to keep looking to God and keep working Amen. and keep laboring. Amen. Uh, so, but anyway... <laughs> Psalm 33 and 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed is he, or blessed is the nation rather, whose God is the Lord. I don't know if you know this, but as a nation, we are blessed. Amen. We are blessed. And the media would lead you to think that our country is going to hell in a handbasket. They would. But if that was the case, why are people still pouring in here? Uh, if that's the case, if everything was so bad, and if everything was so terrible, why are people illegally pouring in here at breakneck speed? That tells you that maybe there are things that we're overlooking here. Maybe we're dismissing how good we have it. Amen? I'm serious. Some of the People who you would consider poor are some of the most blessed people in America. Yes, Amen. Some of the most poorest people in America may not have the most expensive car, but they will have a car. Uh, you go into their homes, they might not have caviar, they might not have steak, but they have food. And a lot of times if you go to some of the most poorest people in our country, they'll have big TVs and, and a whole lot of, and, and, and this one I don't understand, 
Uh, but uh, their children have Jordans on and all these different things and all that. So but I'm not saying that to be dismissive. But what I'm saying is we are blessed. Why? Because no matter how bad you think the government is, they have built in a safety net for people who are poor and people that for whatever reason can't do for themselves that they'll be able to have a roof over their head and they'll be able to have food on their table. How many countries you know do that? Usually in these other countries, if you're poor, you on your own. Think about it. People living with dirt floors. People with huts that where the rain come in. And all these other things. Amen. We are so blessed. Amen. We are so blessed. Oh, glory to God. Let us pray. Sir, would you pray, please? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Amen. Thank you, brother. We are so blessed. Amen. Blessed is the nation. Oh, God, lift your hands and worship God right now. You say, I know it's not perfect. I know everything is not all that it should be. But nevertheless, we are blessed beyond our wildest imagination. We are blessed to where people that are on drugs can get the help that they need. We are blessed uh, to where women that have been battered uh, can go to shelters uh, and get the help for them and their children. We are blessed uh, among our imagination. Yes, sir. The word blessed does not necessarily mean having a big car and having a big house and, and uh, having millions of dollars in the bank and, and uh, uh, living in the most expensive part of time. It doesn't necessarily mean that. If, but if you have that, or if you have been blessed to that degree, we, we'll shout with you. Just invite us over to eat, all right? Or if you have a beautiful car to drive, just, just let me ride with you. Amen? I'm not, I'm not mad. Amen. I want, we, 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 hey, we don't hate, we celebrate. Amen. Don't hate, let's celebrate. Amen. If God's blessed you with a million dollars, hey, I'm thankful. Amen. Because if he gave you one, that means I can get one. Amen. Or if you have something, that means, that, because the Bible said God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. So why would we pull another person down? Black, white. Asian, Hispanic, I ain't, I'm not mad at anybody because our nation is blessed. And all you got to do is apply yourself. All you got to do is apply yourself and get the knowledge that you need. You can become successful. You can, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. All you got to do is be thick-skinned and say, I'm going to learn. I'm going to educate myself. I'm going to talk to the right people. But there's nothing you can't do in this country. Even with racism, thick as it is. If you want to do something, you can still do it. I promise you, if you want it, it's up to you. If it is to be, it's up to me. I'm not worried about somebody pulling me down. I'm not worried about somebody being prejudiced towards me. You, uh, you know why you sitting over there prejudice? I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Uh, while you're sitting over there pre prejudice, I'm praying for somebody. 
while you sitting over there hating on me, uh, I'm witnessing, I'm, I'm ministering, I'm, I'm trying to be a better father, I'm trying to be a better husband, I'm trying to be a better man, I'm praying uh, and spending time with God uh, because I know if God's on my side, uh, if God be for me, uh, who can be against me, uh, who can separate me, uh, uh, if you got God in your life, uh, you can't be stopped, uh, if you got God in your life, uh, you can win the battle. Uh, if you got God on your side, uh, you can make it happen. Don't let these people on TV tell you what you can't do. Don't let these people on TV show you all this stuff so you get depressed and say you can't make it. I know there's a lot of crime. I know there's a lot of hate, uh, but I've got a lot of I said I got a lot of God and with God on my side I can do it because blessed is the nation whose Lord is God glory to his name the word blessed is speaking of Bible happiness what that means is that inside inside of you because you have invited God into your life and because you have allowed him to take all that stuff that you used to do the thinking you used to have, uh, the attitudes you used to live with, uh, you've allowed God to wash all of that uh, and cleanse all of that, uh, and now you're at one with yourself, uh, and you're walking and talking with God, uh, and so now uh, that brings happiness. Uh, you're happy. Uh, you're at peace uh, because you have God uh, in your life, and it's not based on external factors. It's not based on what you have and don't have. It's based on the fact that I'm right with my maker. Uh, and because I'm right with my maker, uh, as I keep serving him, uh, as I keep obeying him, uh, things are coming in my favor. Uh, things will work out for me. Uh, that's what I love about you, Sister Chanel. Uh, you've had so many ups and downs, uh, but you just keep showing up. You just keep showing up and saying, Pastor, I know I've had my ups and downs. I look at Sister Priscilla and some of the others. You keep getting knocked down or you keep having this problem, but you keep coming because you know in your mind and you know in your heart that God has the answers for what's wrong in your life. God is still God. Yes, is. Amen. Blessed is the nation. Huh? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The word blessed means Bible happiness means I'm happy because I'm at peace within. Because I know Jesus or I know God. Uh, he saved me. He's delivered me. He's made me one within. Uh, and now uh, I don't base who I am uh, on things outside. Uh, I base who I am uh, on the fact that I've been delivered. Uh, I base it on the fact that I'm a new creation. Uh, I base it on the fact uh, that I'm walking and talking in victory. Uh, I base it on the fact uh, that I know him uh, as my personal savior uh, and one day I came to him uh, and he washed me uh, and he cleansed me uh, and he made me whole Amen. I know we're living in a time where there's a lot of upheaval there's a lot of turbulence there's a lot of trouble chaos disturbance disruption and a lot of confusion I know I know I'm not oblivious to the issues that we face. I'm not oblivious to the protesting and the killing and, and all of these things. I'm not oblivious to it. I know that we have issues. We have political issues. We have racial issues. We have crime issues, financial issues, education issues, Drugs and alcohol issues. We have education inequity. Amen. Uh, we have 
people, our country has an identity problem. We don't even know what bathroom to go in no more. Amen. Uh, I've never heard of having over a hundred different types of sex. I, I just, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm, just, I'm serious. We have issues. We got problems. Amen. And I'm just sharing. Ain't no need to tuck, put, put your head in the sand. Amen. We're not going to do that. We're going to cry loud and spare not. We're going to lift up our voice like a trumpet and show the people their transgressions, the Bible said. It's time to preach the gospel and tell people uh, that it's time for our country to turn back to God. Uh, it's time for us uh, to do uh, what we started out uh, in the Constitution uh, where the theme of our country is uh, in God we trust. Uh, I said in God uh, we trust. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Blessed is the nation. We are blessed, folks. Huh? I'm telling you, we are blessed. Don't let you, don't, don't get it twisted. Amen. Don't let these people cause you to think, oh my God, uh, uh, we, it, it's awful. And, and we're, 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 everything's, we're, we're going down the tubes uh, and all of these things. Uh, and, and like I said, I understand we have problems. And I understand, but I'm not against the, I don't dismiss the fact that in all of that, uh, we're still blessed. In all of that, God loves us. Uh, in all of that, uh, we still have more uh, than many other countries uh, in the world. Uh, because God uh, is our Lord. Uh, I said God uh, is our Lord. The 4th of July is the most significant national holiday in our country. It celebrates the Declaration of Independence, adopted on the 4th of July, 1776. That's a long time ago. I still remember as a kid in elementary school, we celebrated the bicentennial year. That was our 200. We're one of the youngest nations in the world, too. But back then in 1976, we celebrated our bicentennial year, which was 200 years as a country. But in, in, in 1776, the 13 colonies, the original 13 colonies of America declared themselves to be states uh, and no longer part of the British Empire. We was letting the people in Britain know it's over. Amen. It's over with for you. That's why the people in the Northeast talk the way they do. You ever notice that uh, the people in Boston and New York and all that have a similar accent to the ones in England because at one time England used to run us. Amen. But we said no more. Uh, I said no more uh, during the war. Uh, it's over. We are declaring ourselves uh, a country and we're states now, the 13 original colonies. Did you not know in 1776... Let me share some interesting facts with you. Uh, just, you know, we're preaching, we're sharing. It's the 4th of July. Amen. In 1776, you know how many people was in the country? 2.5 million. In 1770, that's all it was. 2.5 million people. Now, I think we have well over 300 million, maybe more than that, actually. But anyway, and three presidents have died on the 4th of July. President John Adams, Thomas Jefferson died on the 4th of July, and James Monroe, they all died on 4th of You didn't even know that, did you? You know why? Because they didn't teach it to us. It's amazing. Just like all other history, black history and various things, there's a lot of things, they, but they'll, they'll tell us Paul Revere made that famous run, which, he, which, which we found out later on he was too drunk to get on the horse. But uh, talk about the British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming, and all these different things. They taught us all this junk, amen, uh, and, and, and left us in the dark on things that probably are really important, Amen. But the Bible said, and I thank God for our country, 
But my Bible says, blessed is the nation, oh, whose God is the Lord. We're blessed, really, because our country was established in God. That's really what it is. And maybe we veered off, and maybe we've gone into areas that we shouldn't have gone into, but it doesn't change history. Are you with me? It doesn't change history. Uh, history is still history. Uh, we the people, uh, in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice and domestic tranquility, uh, and then you go on and read the preamble and all these things. You got God wrapped up all in our history. Uh, you know what? Uh, blessed is the nation uh, whose God uh, is the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under who? Under who? Under who? A lot of people have forgotten that. I said a lot of people have forgotten that. Amen. People in politics, people in power, people who have some say so, they've forgotten that we have this because of God. You can hate all you want. Huh? You can hate all you want but you can't hate the God out of me. Uh, you can hate all you want. Uh, uh, you can not like me. Uh, you can, I, 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 me and Reverend Steele was talking about this. We don't, under, we don't even understand prejudice. I, I don't even understand that. I mean, how, how, what, how does that even work? Uh, dislike somebody because they're different from you. Hey Amen. I don't even, have you ever opened up a box of crayon? Are they all black? Are they all green? Are they, when you paint pictures or when you color pictures, it's nice to have choices, isn't it? It's nice to be able to say, I want to use the red. I want to be able to use, it's nice uh, that tonight, I'm, today I'm preaching, but tomorrow uh, Reverend Steele might be preaching, amen? Or Reverend Garay, who's down in Carolina, he's Mexican, maybe he might preach today. We'll go over in the crayon box uh, and get uh, whoever God wants to use. Are you with me? What is this mess? One nation under God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One nation under God. I still remember saying that before school started. And, and all of a sudden, they don't want us praying. All of a sudden, uh, what's that lady's name? Madam, uh, uh, Ma Ma what's her name? Madam O'Hara convinced the courts to take prayer out of the school, and the schools have never been the same. It's never been, it's been downhill ever since. Are you with me? Uh, it's been downhill ever since. Uh, but I still remember when we could pray in school. Uh, I still remember when we could do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we had a certain dignity uh, and a certain respect. And then I remember Sister Carla going, I was just a senior in high school. And I was thinking, well, I gotta, I'm going to college. I probably should take some foreign language. So I'm going to switch my schedule to Spanish. Amen. And when I got in there, I appreciate the teacher. She taught us, Prometo, Fidelidad, a la bandera de los Unados de, 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 hold on, hold on. Prometo, for, prometo Fidelidad, a la bandera de los Estados Unidos, something America. All right. And uh, I forgot it already. But they taught us the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish. Huh? I used to could remember, but age have caught up to me. All right? But, they, but she taught us things in Spanish. Why? Because it's important. God is the Lord of our nation. I say, God is the Lord of our nation. And we need to turn back to God. We need to turn back to God. 
Now, I want to end on this. And I want to issue a warning to men and women. I want to issue a warning to you. And I want people to understand that if you think God is a joke, and you think church is a joke, and you think the Bible is a joke, and you think the Spirit of God is a joke, and you think this is a game that we're playing, and people uh, take church, uh, uh, they can just take it or leave it. Uh, uh, people just live their life arbitrarily and just, uh, just do whatever they want. You think you can just live any old kind of way and it's all right. You think you can just be in any old kind of relationship and you think that's okay. If you think uh, any kind of relationship outside of man and woman before God is all right. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, let me read to you Psalm 9 and 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Are you with me? We got to be careful as a country that we don't forget God. We got to be careful as a country that we still respect the word of God, that we still pray, that we still walk with God and talk with God and respect God. Amen. Let's all stand. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. I said, we are so blessed. You're blessed, and you don't even know it. Your children are blessed. Your grandmothers, your grandparents are blessed. Your moms and dads are blessed. Your household is blessed because you live in this country. It doesn't matter what our problems are. It doesn't matter the difficulties that we face. The Bible said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. How many of you believe he's still Lord tonight? Amen. I mean today. He's still Lord. I said he's still Lord. I said he's still Lord. He's still Lord. He's Lord over the white man. He's Lord over the black man. He's Lord over the Hispanic. He's Lord over the Asian. Jesus is still Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is the nation. The song says, forever you're my king. Uh, hallelujah. Forever I love you with all my heart. Yes, I love you, God. They're trying to destroy our country. They're trying to destroy what you put together. You took people from all other walks of life. Just think. God took people from all other places in the world and brought us all here. And we can't figure it out. We can't see the big picture. We are so blessed. We're so busy looking at how different somebody is. We're so busy worrying about how much money someone has. We're so busy worrying about and thinking about things that don't even matter in the grand scheme of things. Why don't we just love one another? Why don't we be brothers and sisters in Christ? The Bible said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. Let him bless you this morning. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus, forever. Hallelujah. With all my heart. Do you love him with all your heart? Hallelujah. God, I thank you for allowing me to grow up in this country. Hallelujah. My ancestry may be somewhere else. Hallelujah. But you allowed us to grow up here for a reason. 
You allowed us to be here for a reason, and we need to appreciate that. We need to celebrate that. We need to love one another. I reject what they're trying to project upon us. I reject what they're trying to convince us of. Hallelujah. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our politicians. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters. We need to pray for these young people killing one another. We need to be praying. Hallelujah. We need to pray for those in prison. Oh, God. I love you forever, 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 you're my king. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to give you a chance to really spend some time with God. Hallelujah. She's going to cut.